What you're currently looking at is the entire Shrek movie. Well, not really, it's actually just a bunch of Minecraft blocks, but with this Minecraft world, you actually have all the information needed to fully reconstruct the Shrek movie in glorious 27p. But how would that even be possible? I've recently fallen down the rabbit hole of finding unconventional ways to store and encrypt my files. All methods are purely in the pursuit of novelty, but there's actually a fair few reasons someone might want to employ a strange encryption method. A few of these reasons might be to hide files in plain sight, avoid automatic copyright detection, resistance of forensic detection, among various other reasons. Of course I'm not condoning any of these possible motives, I'm purely interested in the data science behind an idea like this because I think it's <laughs> pretty rad. So how did I store the Shrek movie in Minecraft? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We employ the use of a substitution cipher. This is one of the oldest encryption methods, with known uses of it dating back to ancient civilizations. You take your alphabet and write down one symbol or letter corresponding to each letter in your alphabet. So you end up with a key looking something like this. In our case, we're trying to store a file. A file is made up of bytes, of which there's two to the eight possible. So our letter consists of 256 letters. Now we need a corresponding symbol to go along with each letter. Luckily, in Minecraft, there's far more than 256 blocks to correspond to each byte. But if we want our file to remain intact, we need the blocks we choose to abide by a few rules. The blocks cannot be affected by gravity, as this could lose us information. This, of course, rules out blocks such as gravel, sand, and anvils. The blocks cannot possibly burn or break other blocks. This rules out TNT and lava. The blocks need to be able to be placed on anything, which will rule out blocks such as torches. These rules eliminate quite a few blocks, but thankfully we still have more than enough. We then create a one-to-one -one and onto mapping between every possible byte and our chosen blocks. Now that we have our alphabet mapping, we need to start writing. To do this, I created a local Minecraft server with Bucket and wrote a custom plugin to create a command that generates blocks based on an inputted file. The plugin itself is pretty simple. All it does is open a file, read through it sequentially, use a lookup table to convert between bytes and blocks, then places a block down in a specified order. For the lookup table, I used hash maps since you get that sweet, sweet O of 1 lookup. Technically, for the conversion of byte to block, you could just use an array to save yourself a few clock cycles calculating a hash, but I like hash maps. As for the order of block placement, I used three nested for loops, first iterating through the x dimension, then the z dimension, then the y dimension giving us a snake pattern that goes all the way down a chunk. The order of writing data gives us yet another layer of encryption that we can use to further obfuscate our data. A few ways of switching it up would include exchanging the order of loops, including dummy chunks that contain erroneous information, using custom functions to dictate a random placement order, among nearly infinite other methods. Now all we have to do is run the commands. I have it bound to slash generate blocks and bam. There is our file represented by a bunch of blocks in Minecraft. Exploring the data in 3D really makes me appreciate how much data is actually stored on our computers, even in files that just look like this. Take a look at me! What am I? Uh... Read it So now that we have all these blocks, how do we actually retrieve that data back? You guessed it. We do the same process in reverse. We create a blank file, read the blocks sequentially in the order we wrote them in, then append the bytes to the end of the file. Of course, we'll have to know the extension of our original file for our computer to be able to read the data, but this can also be encoded in plain text at the beginning or end of our file to automatically add the extension. Now we can secretly save our files in a Minecraft world, and nobody can possibly retrieve the data unless they have our conversion table, right? Well, no. Assuming someone knew the order we wrote our data to the world in, it'd actually be pretty easy to reconstruct the file, even without the table. But how is this possible? Most file formats contain header data, information specific to certain file formats. These oftentimes are set bytes, the pattern of which can be seen sometimes within the blocks. For example, you can clearly see a pattern in this file that reveals we are storing an mp4. Since these bytes are known pieces of data, we can slowly start putting our conversion table together. How about if we wanted to store plain text? Plain text files don't have any unique headers, so surely we wouldn't be able to decipher the message. Well, as it turns out, the substitution cipher on plain text has been cracked over a thousand years ago, with a book being written on the subject by Al-Kindi around the year 850. You see, Al-Kindi noticed that frequency of letters of languages usually fall within certain percentages, given enough text. 
In English, E is the most common character, occurring about 12% of the time. So, if we encrypted our plain text into Minecraft blocks and lost the conversion table, we'd most likely be able to retrieve our text back again. If we saw a furnace block took up about 13% of blocks and an acacia slab about 9%, we'd be able to reasonably deduce a furnace is an E and the slab is a T. From there, we'd probably see the pattern T mystery block E. We'd then be able to deduce the mystery block is H, since the is the most common word in English. From there, we could keep guessing letters slash words based on the frequency and structure. This type of code breaking is known as frequency analysis and illuminates us as to why substitutions are almost useless in the modern encryption era. To prove how easy it actually is to break a plaintext encrypted in this manner, I had my friend Jordan send me a Minecraft world, storing one of his journal entries in it, which I will now break live. And we're live. Um, this is the Minecraft world Jordan has sent me. That contains all of his dirty secrets in. As you can see, it's quite a bit smaller than the... Uh, any other file since it's just plain text. Basically, each one of these blocks is one character in his diary. Um, so, yeah, let's get to cracking it. Um, so, first off, let's do the command decode blocks. And if we look at the console here, we see files saved successfully. Let's get out of Minecraft. And into Visual Studio. This will give us the frequency analysis. I just wrote a really quick Python script here to super simply analyze uh, the frequency of each character. So let's run it and let's see. When I did the conversion table, I basically just switched up all the characters. So the encrypted text just looks like a bunch of nonsense right now, but you can still see word structure as I mapped uh, spaces to spaces and periods to periods and then got rid of all other punctuation. Just to make it easier on myself, I didn't want to hate myself for doing this. So we can see R takes up about 9.2%, um, which isn't, of course, super in line with what we expect to see, but this was a shorter piece of text. All right, so let's start cracking this. I wrote um, a really simple Python script that basically lets you substitute letters for different letters. Um, so we're basically going to do that for easy code breaking. So let's get the frequency printed back up again. So R is the most common, so let's start running this. So we have R is the most common letter, so that's probably an E. So let's do R equals R equals E. So it substitutes it this and this. Uh, what's the next most common? G. So that's probably a T because that's the next most common, so I'll do that, g equals t. So we should start to see this slowly become decrypted. This starts off a sentence, and it's singular, so I'm guessing that's an i, so let's do v equals i. And you can see this process is pretty easy and simple. You get there pretty quick, actually. Let's look at the frequencies again. So n is pretty high, plus it's appearing at the beginning of a two letter, so I'm guessing that's an a, so maybe i am. Let's try that n equals a, do c equals m, so i am, yes, there's another i am in there too, so I'm guessing that's right, so we have an e a at the very beginning, so I'm guessing this is dear diary since this is his diary journal, so let's, uh, let's replace that out, there we go, we are getting there, dear diary, i am, so this is a long, wrong letter, since it hasn't changed. I'm guessing entry, I'm this entry. That makes sense to me. I'm writing T equals G this letter. Mama. Okay, let's see. I am writing probably this. Alright, we have the first part of our diary decrypted. To diary, I am writing this entry right now, probably. B equals O. You see, once we get past the first few frequencies, all we really have to do is analyze the word structure and context clues. Um, this text isn't really even long enough to get that accurate of a, you know, statistical frequency. But yeah, let's just keep going like this. I am writing this entry right now. By while I am blank in my room, maybe trapped stuck something i guess y equals l 
right now while I am trapped. Oh no, that makes it L O blank E D. Maybe locked in my room. P equals P equals C X equals K. Okay. Oh, we're we're cooking. I'm writing this entry right now while I'm locked in my room. Mom was really mad at me earlier. So I don't think we've decrypted these ones yet. Can't be and. I'm locked in my room. Mom was really mad at me earlier, but I did not know why. I drew some. That's definitely pictures. C. P. Drew some pictures of me and the cat. Okay. Of me and the cat, but mom still will not open the door. I also found a weird trap door under the carpet. <laughs> it would not open no matter what. I tried calling mom, but she could not hear me. This is definitely over. I equals B. Not but no matter what. I tried calling for mom, but she could not hear me over the television show she is watching. When dad got home from the store, when dad gets home from the store, I will have to ask him what it is for. That reminds me, I saw something really Crammy. Crazy? Crazy on the news yesterday. Some guy with a big nose pulled the fire alarm. Fire alarm at an Italian restaurant and they called the cops on him. I'm arresting every single person here. The news reporter said the man was trying to print out some weird pictures of a man and a horse using the restaurant printers. What a sick... I know what that is. What, what a, a sick, sick joke. joke. The news showed a video someone took where the man kept saying he was not, not crazy. crazy. But I do not think they believed him. He is going to need a really good lawyer to get away with that. He sure will. I got really close to beating my friend at Word Hunt earlier. <laughs> no, he didn't. He only won because he found the word subscribe. I have never gotten close to a word as long as subscribe before. I know he subscribes to the Word Hunt magazine, so that is probably how we, how he knew how to spell subscribe. That is in expensive. That almost kind of works like that, though. Okay, equals X. Expensive subscription, but I do not subscribe to that idea that he is cheating. Anyways, I hear my mom down the hallway, so she will let me out of my room now. X, D, C. Yeah, that's definitely Q. Nerd. X UCL Jordan. Well, thanks, Jordan. That was a nice message. And that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed. This one took a lot of work, but I think it was worth the effort. If you have any further ideas on expanding this concept or ideas on other unconventional ways of storing files, please let me know. I'm also very open to feedback and will try to get back to as many of you as I can. And as always, the code will be on my GitHub in the description, as well as the compiled plugin itself. I hope you all have a blessed day.